for joining us. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Our subscribers have been rising for the past episodes and we can't thank y'all enough. Hit that like button, leave a comment whenever y'all feel like doing it. Benny, where can they find us on social media? Yeah, you can find us at Ray Benny Sports and we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, TikTok. Everyone's favorite. We have CFL talk. We have NFL talk, NHL talk, Winnipeg Jets talk. We have the NFL Power Five after this weekend's action. But let's start off with the CFL playoffs. Kind of what everyone expected to happen. I didn't call it that way. (laughs) But it was BC winning at home and Montreal winning at home. uh, Setting up a Winnipeg BC monster matchup on Sunday, uh, as well as the Alouettes Toronto, which I'm sure will be a good game. Benny, any thoughts on the playoff action this weekend? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not surprised by the outcomes, really. Um, I'm surprised it, it, Montreal and Hamilton. Uh, Montreal took away or took that game away early in, in that first half, and then hung on for the for the lead after that and the win. Yeah. Um, that D just got after that Hamilton O line. Um, you know, not letting Dane Evans or Matthew Schiltz, you know, settle in or anything like that. So mm-hmm. big props to them. Trevor Harris was, you know, he did, he got it done. He was decent, you know, yeah. didn't do anything spectacular. Just got needed to do what he had to do. And then the running game for Montreal uh, helped pave the way as well. Not very entertaining football either game, but you talk no. about Trevor Harris. Let's talk about Trevor Harris for a second. Is he for real? Because this guy's been sneaky good. Reminder, he was just voted player of the month in the CFL. Uh, Winning a couple games late, 76% passing, uh, over 1,100 yards in that month, five touchdowns. And he sneakily got over 4,000 yards this year. Yeah. Yeah, I think. How many quarterbacks have done that? Who's the other one? Only two other ones. (laughs) Oh, two other ones. Yeah, you can name a Calvio. Can you name the other <laughs> yeah. one? Who's, so who's the other one? Sam, the right Chalet are very rad. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but right, he's, right. he's been impressive. So, yes, I think he is for real. Yeah. Um, you know what? When he doesn't have to do a lot and he has his short passing, quick passing game and the old line gives him enough, yeah, he is good. When, yeah. when he has to start forcing it and maybe come back in a game, um, that's where the bad Trevor Harris comes out, right? Yes. And I think Montreal knows that. and They've been playing to that strength. Um, not having him do a lot, just do enough. Like he, he always hovers around close to 200 yards, right? Mm-hmm. But he has like 20 something completions. So it's you know, not a lot of far throws. It's a lot of short completions. Um, but yeah, he's getting the job done. And if that's what you're asking him to do and he's doing it, yeah, then he's good to go. So let's look in the West now where we have BC and Calgary. Again, game kind of got out of hand quickly. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised Calgary didn't put up a better fight, to be honest with you. Yeah, it seemed like a lot of mistakes all around, you know, from Dickinson down, you know, like a lot of poor choices. Uh, they had some short yardage in, in BC's zone um, and they tried an end around and then you tried a completion, you know, or sorry, a, a throw and an incompletion on the other one, you know, so not great decisions by Dickinson. Then the late field goal, Jake Mayer wasn't yeah. having the greatest game either, but they had the running game kind of going and they abandoned it, you know, that was, they, that, they, that was nonsense. Yeah, they said BC was gearing up to stop it, so they audible the throws. Well, no, but it was still working. You had 5.9 yards per carry. Exactly. Keep it going, we, especially when Jake Mayer was struggling. So, you know, then you see Bo Levi coming in and start to drive the ball down the field, but couldn't end up uh, scoring when, when they needed to. Um, yeah. But it's interesting to see him come back in and give that one more shot, and but couldn't get the job done. So we have BC and the Bombers. Does BC have a chance? Uh of course they have a chance. That's why you play the game. They're playing the Bombers at home. Uh, what are your thoughts? Quick thoughts, not analysis on the game coming up. I think if the weather's good, like not cold, like not just cold, like if it's, you know, minus five or minus eight yeah. and the rest of it's clear, I think they got a good chance because their their offense runs on, you know, turf or feel, you know, clean grass kind of thing. And it's very quick that way. So mm-hmm. I think of the, depending on the weather, but I still think Winnipeg is going to come ahead with this game anyways. Yeah, the only thing I don't want to see is a repeat of how they started the West Final last year. They yeah. can't do that. <laughs> no. They can't turn the ball over in scoring position against the Lions. Yeah. not That's not a good idea. No, like it, the Lions are going to finish those drives off. Saskatchewan's offense struggled to finish off those turnovers last year, Yeah, which gave the Bombers a chance to come back. BC probably doesn't give us that chance to come back. 
Uh, CFL Hot Topics. Halftime show announced this week. Ugh. Thoughts on that halftime show? <laughs> I can't even name who's in the halftime oh, show. It, hold on, sorry, sorry, sorry. The, the <laughs> halftime show is like many other Canadians. You no, know, you don't know what's going on. Uh, Jordan Davis. Who? Yeah. Tyler Hubbard of Florida Georgia Line. Okay. And Canada's own Josh Ross. I can, what? I can't. I can't. Yeah, I've heard of Georgia Florida or Florida Georgia Line. Did I say that right? Yeah, you did. <laughs> but uh, I haven't heard of the other two, and I can't name a song off of Florida Georgia Line either. So I, I don't see how this is bringing new eyes to the CFL on its biggest stage. Like, uh, do you remember like the early two thousands when they had good halftime shows? So they had like the Guess Who, Shania Twain, uh, Black Eyed Peas one year, Tragic yeah. Lady, Lady Kravitz. Uh, for the 100th Grey Cup, they had Justin Bieber and Gordon Lightfoot and others. Uh, since then, like, well, come on. Keith Urban and Hamilton, maybe? And then yeah, they, as long <laughs> they let that guy talk for the whole third quarter and ruin the game. Ugh. I was just going to say, as long as they don't bring all three of these guys into the uh, booth later on and let them talk for the whole third quarter. No doubt, eh? Imagine, that was like, painful with Keith Urban. Imagine the Super Bowl if they brought in Michael Jackson to talk after his halftime oh, show. Goodness. It's unnecessary. They should have brought in Snoop last year at the Super Bowl. They should have brought Snoop into the Grey Cup. Yeah, that's it. See, the NFL does it right. They they have the game and they also bring in this halftime show that they know will attract other fans, not yeah. football fans, to come watch. See if I was like, huh? Oh, um. It's in Saskatchewan. Let's do country music. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, give me. That's a- not going to bring other people in. No. No. Any other CFL hot topics? Yeah, I got a question for you. Okay. CFL playoffs. I've been on a Sunday for forever. Mm-hmm. Should they move them away from Sunday to Saturday? Not no. compete with the NFL. No, no, no. Watch it on Sunday. Like the ratings of the Winnipeg, Saskatchewan, Western final prove that we can compete. And wasn't that the same? Or was it two years ago where they had the Jets game at the same time? Right after the playoff game. It was last year. They moved the yeah. Jets regular season game to after the they switched game. it, yeah. And ratings weren't hurt, nothing, and attendance didn't hurt anything. So I don't think they should move. NFL's, I, I get it though. Just maybe just not promote NFL when you're talking about CFL. <laughs> good old TSN. Um, yeah, I, it, it's good if it's Winnipeg, Saskatchewan. Your numbers are probably always going to be good, no matter what in the playoffs. It'll be interesting to see what the numbers come out to this weekend in, in comparison with NFL, but. You know, it may be something to look at if you want to just take Saturday to yourself. You got the two afternoon games uh, before even NHL Saturday, uh, Saturday Night Hockey starts, right? Or Hockey Night in Canada starts uh, later Saturday. So BC we'll see after these numbers. People. Yeah. BC got 30,000 people. Yeah, that's good. For that's them. fantastic. Oh, my goodness. I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, join us next episode uh, when we talk about the Western final analysis and we might have a little great cup package prize going on here. Mm-hmm. It's a gooder. Yeah, a little bit of jersey action, maybe. With some ink on it. Ooh. Right. Can I win it? No. Uh, Get out of here. That's terrible. Conflict of interest. <laughs> Get out of here. Not on Ram Benny Talk Sports, Benny. Let's <sighs> move on to NFL hot topics and let's uh, look at some games with weight. Uh, statement games that happens this week. Let's start off first with the Jets and the bills thoughts on that game big win for the jets man i mean yeah. they've been gearing up getting there they they look like they were there and then they lost to new england and we're like eh, same old jets yeah but robert sal has got that d humming um which makes up for any shortcomings on on the offense so big win for them and that afc east is competitive their d is dominant and that's not surprising with sale there we knew he was no. a great defensive coach and he's bringing yeah. that they, i think they have the sack leader and of course, they have my boy Sauce. Sauce, yeah. Oh yeah, man, I'm all about that sauce. The AFC is beasting. Yeah, and Josh Allen is hurt. Yeah, so elbow. that could be long we'll term in this. We'll season. see what comes out with that, but yeah, be long term. Uh, Lions, Packers, uh, Packers <laughs> are done. Packers are done. What happened to Aaron Rodgers, man? I know we've talked about him a few times over the last few weeks, but he just keeps looking worse and worse. They're forcing it for that guy. Run the ball. Run the ball. This guy's running Jones. He's over five yards a carry. And he's middle of the pack of the amount of carries. Run the ball. Yeah, I mean, three three interceptions total for Rodgers, two in the red zone. Stupid. 
you lose to the Lions at home. I don't know. Has he ever lost to the Lions at all? Probably, maybe, but not much. No. Tough stretch coming up for them, too. And uh, little Wayne's off the bandwagon. No, of He's blaming Rodgers. Yeah, they're trash. <laughs> Trying to move on to something different. What's Jordan Love up to these days? That's the thing. You bench Rodgers at some point and see what Rogers or Love can do for the rest of the season. Uh, why not? If he wants to assert who owns that dressing room, do it. Eventually. Give Rodgers a couple more. If it's not working, it's time for the young guy. Sorry to yeah. Say. But they I won't. mean, if, if you're out of the playoffs or something or your chances are very slim, then at some point you got to see if Love can do it, right? Or you're drafting or going after someone else. But I don't know. Rodgers' contract what's, is crazy. So What's their record? Three and six. They're not coming back. They're well, not making a crazy run for the playoffs. The only thing is the NFC bottom six or seven, like San Francisco's, I guess, seventh place, and they're four and four. So, you know, they still got a shot, I guess. What What's going to happen where they turn it around? Green Bay, they're done. Unless oh, they get I don't Odell think they Beckham will. Jr. Unless they get Odell Beckham Jr., which might help <clears> them out, they're done. He's not going there. He wants to go to – he's going to go with a contender and someone who's also going to pay him at the same time. So Yeah, better not be Tom Brady. Let's talk about Tom Brady, Rams, and T-Bay. Thoughts on that game? Brady throwing it 58 times. That's not sustainable. I mean, I don't understand what's happening. Like, earlier this season, we had Brady and Rodgers, and it was a dud. Now we have Brady and Stafford, and that's a dud. Um, the Rams, I don't know how they lost this game. They had it. The D stopped them. And then Cooper Cup slid five yards short of a first down and they had to punt it. And Tom Brady Magic came out and got the win. Yeah, we're seeing the new quarterbacks take over and the old quarterbacks mosey on down. Uh, Rams and Rams, we just talked about that. Oh, Titans and question Chicago. for you then on that, speaking uh -huh. of QBs, uh -huh. is it weird that we're seeing all these QBs struggle in this season? You got like Brady. The ones? They, yeah, like, like it's like all of a sudden this one season, it's like, they all hit the wall. You know, you got Tom Brady, you got Russell Wilson, Roger Stafford, even Matt Ryan, if you want to include him. Like it just, they all hit that wall and they're all, yeah. all done kind of thing. Well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> In Pittsburgh, we've seen this starting two years ago with Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. And he was the first of that kind of generation draft class-ish that's like old, beat up. Oh, yeah, they're on their way out. And the rest are just fall <clears throat> dominoes following, man. It's crazy because you got Rogers MVP last year, Brady throwing all those touchdowns, and now all of a sudden they're just former shells of themselves. Like they, yeah. Brady's throwing it a lot. Brady's got lots of yards, but he doesn't. He can't get into the end zone at all. So. When you get old and you don't have the weapons, or their weapons are injured, this is what happens. And Rogers losing Devontae Adams. All don't have great O lines playing right now. No, yeah. it's not in good position. Not in a good position. Talk nope. about quarterbacks. What's going on in New Orleans? Like Dalton, I get it. He might be more efficient. But Jameis Winston on the bench, why didn't they put him in? At least in the end of the game, something. Like, ugh, Dennis Allen's trash. And so why did, why did you resign him for what you resigned him to if you weren't going to play him? It makes no sense. And he's healthy by this point, right? Yeah, as far as I know. I mean, you wouldn't be, you know, the backing Dalton up if you weren't healthy. Would well, That would be pretty idiotic by New Orleans. I mean, but that's the thing. Dalton's... He's moving the ball, but he's still throwing his picks here and there, and it's not efficient enough. They're not scoring. So even in the game uh, on Monday night, yeah, yeah, you're surprised. Like, why wouldn't we see Winston at some point coming in and see if he could spark this offense? Even even not using Taysom Hill as much, knowing what he sparks your offense too. Two times ago, the guy had the ball in his hands, and they tried yeah. to throw to him one other time. If <laughs> That makes no sense. The guy is probably, some might say this hyperbole, hyperbole, but he's probably the most versatile offensive weapon in the league. Yeah. If you look across the board with talent, with running the ball, catching the ball, and throwing the ball, why aren't you putting the ball in this guy's hands? It makes absolutely no sense. Twice they get the ball in this guy's hands. <sighs> yeah. And he's shown over the last few games when he got the ball in his hands, either he's taking it for 60 yards for a touchdown or he's making a, a decent pass. Like he, he can do either one of those or a, those things, right? Yeah. So use him, especially when you're struggling. But I, I don't understand. Jameis is still young enough that if he can come in and play and move that offense, you got someone for next year. Yeah, he needs you an know. offensive coach. Yeah, Dalton. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he, I mean, he looked pretty good, you know, in for his limited play last year. Yeah, and um, then he got hurt. And then he got hurt. I don't know if he would have kept it going through the whole season, but he, 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 I don't know. He was your starter when he started the season. He got injured. And now you're going to Dalton. 
Dalton's he's washed not, up. He's done. Exactly. Uh, and yeah. the only way Dalton was was winning is because Kamara gets hot. And they didn't use him yesterday or on Monday either. Really, yesterday. The Ravens are what <laughs> a, a low to mid, a middle low tier defense. Yeah. Twentieth ranked, maybe nineteenth, eighteenth. Ah. Yeah, they should just let the guy play already. Free yeah. James Winston. <laughs> There's a lot of teams that need QBs. Well, oh, here's a team that needs a QB. Indianapolis <laughs> Colts firing Frank Reich, hiring Jeff Saturday, Jim Ursay going power crazy. What are your thoughts on that situation? Uh, I just all I gotta say is wow. Yes. Like it's it's not even the fact that you've uh, fired Frank Reich. Mm-hmm. Um, that whole switching QBs, Ryan to Erlinger and all that, that offense looked terrible. So maybe, yeah, Frank Reich had to go, but you're going to end up hiring a guy that has no head coaching experience uh, in the NFL or college level. Uh, he doesn't even have a guy that's going to call plays because they fired Marcus Brady there a couple weeks ago. Yep. And Frank Reich was a guy calling a place. So and now he's, he's bringing a brand new guy to call plays um, for an offense that's already struggling. <laughs> So what a mess. And I, I attribute that quite a bit to Jim Irsay and I don't know his rush decisions or not having a good plan. It's man's team. I'm fine with this decision, whatever. Uh, he, he gave the job uh, to someone he's good friends with. He's taking a risk. Like it's an interim position. Like, what are you going to do? You can't really interview anyone that's good uh so why not just give the guy a shot so a shot in the dark and see what happens do i think it'll work no <laughs> of course i don't think it'll work uh you're say talking about oh i've been in this game for how many 50 something years i know how to build a team no you don't you know you don't bill you Bullion it. knows how to build a team when he drafted yeah. peyton manning but you know they've been not very good since bill Polian left no, and they, the only times they were good, yeah, Peyton Manning obviously helped and Andrew Luck coming in. They were good with Andrew Luck and they got him destroyed, basically. So, yeah. well, the thing if, is, go ahead. No, as I was gonna say, if you knew how to build a team, Andrew Luck probably wouldn't have quit because he was getting beat up all the time and he just couldn't handle the rehab and all the injuries. Well, you look at a draft class, right? You think about three years, you see how that draft class goes. Uh, so they let Pullian go in 2011. Andrew Luck won, went 11 and 5, 11 and 5, and 11 and 5, I think, his first three years. So he played on the backs of Bill Poley and drafted teams. After that, this franchise has made the playoffs twice. Yeah. So don't right. tell me Ursay knows what the heck, what, what he's doing. No, and he's the one hiring these guys. The guy that was in between Poley and, and Ballard, I can't think of his name right now, Ryan something. But yeah, he, he was terrible. His draft picks were terrible and everything was terrible. And yeah. even Ballard now. Um, I don't know. I've heard that it was Reich that wanted Wentz that wanted Ryan. I don't know if that's true or not, or if it was Ballard that brought these guys in. Yeah. And he hasn't done very well either building up that team. Well, they let two of their best old linemen go in the offseason. Yeah, which was their biggest strength was that old line. Stupid. <laughs> so, Ursa, you know how to build a team. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> I think they're screwed. And, and I'm, I'm not going to get into the minority coaching uh, argument because that's not there the guy won a super bowl with tony dungy he hired jim caldwell i don't think that's an issue here uh, and it's an interim position again who are you gonna interview yeah. whatever hire your best friend i don't care it's not gonna work but his next hiring better be good or jeff saturday <laughs> by some weird freak of luck thing he is a good coach and i don't know that'd be crazy or so he's like oh it's not rocket <laughs> science we're not building rockets it's like okay i guess you're right Ask the Detroit Lions if it's rocket science or not. Yeah. They can't, they can't win for years after. Hey, and didn't they hire a TV guy with Matt Millen right off the bat? And look yeah. at his drafting. <laughs> yeah. Drafting and they be wide receivers and all. Oh. <laughs> see? You see? At least Calvin Johnson was good. Yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> True. And they couldn't win with Matt Stafford. No. Stafford and Johnson, you think he'd be able to win some games? No, they just treat him like trash. Uh, terrible. Let's go to a list that the Detroit Lions probably will not make this year, ever. Did they make it earlier? No, no. Let's go to the NFL Power 5. Uh, let's start off with the bottom, but not really the bottom. Let's start off with 5. I got the Dallas Cowboys at 5. Still looking strong. Still great defense. Mike Parsons. Coach. Who do you got at 5? Yeah, I still got Dallas at 5. I was contemplating slapping the Ravens in there, but I couldn't take the, couldn't take the Cowboys out just yet. 
Man, I was contemplating slapping the New York Jets on five because they beat Buffalo, but I held off. I held off. I got to give it a bit. Uh, who do you got at four? Uh, I still got them. I believe I had them last week. I got the Vikings at four. So do I. That's a, I, I really like the personality of our, uh, of our team, <laughs> of the Minnesota Vikings. I was about to say our because I would say our friend, Dr. Peschke. Uh, he's a huge Vikings fan. I just like the swag. Even them in the plane with uh, Kirk Cousins with the swag. He's a different quarterback. He's relaxed, eh? Oh, you know, my God. Not, How do you like that? How do you like that? No, he's chill. He's ripped. It's funny. There was a picture of him with his shirt off and then Ned Flanders with their shirt off in a meme. <laughs> Remember when Flanders took his shirt off and he was just yeah. ripped under there? Yeah. Wasn't, uh, what's her name? Wasn't Marge drooling or some kind of yeah. stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we got Ned Flanders and his crew at the Vikings at number four. Who do you got at three? We might be. Um, I got the Bills right now at three. Um, that loss is big to the Jets, and if Josh Allen is hurt and out for a bit, uh, to me they'll probably drop out of this top five. But right now, I still got him at three. Yeah, I also have the Bills at three, pretty much for the same reason. Surprising loss, uh, but every team can lose any given Sunday. Yeah, uh, but I still have them in my Power Five. I got the Chiefs at two. Just getting by the Titans. Titans always have a good D, always a physical team. So I'm not surprised it was a close game. Uh, but KC showing that they can grind them out too. Yeah, I got them at two as well. And yeah, it was the Titans seem to always know how to play Kansas City pretty good. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, Mahomes threw for a lot of yards over the course of the game, but he couldn't score. Um, and then, you know, eventually got that late touchdown in that. So good job by the Titans there. But yeah, the Chiefs still figuring out ways to win. The uh, Titans go as far as Derrick Henry goes. Doesn't matter who yeah. the quarterback is. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to win too many games when your quarterback completes five of 16 passes or whatever. So no, Derek Henry Ken- had to do a lot. Kenny Pickett's looking better than Malik Willis, that's for sure. Yeah. Malik Willis? Yeah, Malik yeah. Willis. Yeah. <laughs> so, so far, so good in the very short, short sample that we have. Uh, and we got the Eagles at one. We got the Eagles at one, yep. Yeah, they're tough not to take out one at this point. Yeah, even not the most impressive win against Houston. Struggled a little bit, but they still got it done, and they still won by almost, what, two touchdowns or close to two touchdowns or 10? I can't remember. Yeah. But, so they're getting it done. They look dynamic. Hey, NFL fans out there, whether you're a Cowboys, Vikings, Bills, Chiefs, or Eagles fan, uh, tell us what your power rankings are or any other NFL fan, Steeler fans especially. It's a tough time. Let's just make something up. Uh, let's talk about the NHL, uh, the Winnipeg Jets. Let's talk about the Winnipeg Jets. We got the commissioner in town. Yeah. You know, saying that, uh, oh, he loves coming to, I have trouble not rolling my eyes when I hear that guy saying he loves coming to Winnipeg. <laughs> Give me a break. You don't like Canadian small market teams. Why are you lying? Why are you lying, man? Like, come on. But Batman's in town. He says maybe there's some NHL events coming. Once the construction, the hotel's there. Construction's gone. The hotel's there. Yeah, there wasn't really any major announcement with him coming in. He's, he's just, just making the rounds, I guess, get here before it gets too cold out Yeah, um, kind of thing. But yeah, yeah. someone asked him about the Global Series and if they get, they would play any game in Denmark or something like that. So maybe next year. Why don't they bring the All-Star game here? It would be crazy. It would be crazy. But it's January, right? So? People don't want to come to Winnipeg in January. You just got to be creative with the downtown area. That's what I say. You got that new hotel there, the new Spank and Convention Center with the expansion. Keep it all indoors. Keep it nice. And if, if they could put on a wicked show that just contained indoors and had tunnels or whatever, not tunnels, but skywalks, everything like that. Yeah, then for sure. But well, you always, has it ever been or has it been in the last little while in a cold location? I can't think. Totally friend fan, a fan friendly event. Yeah. Philly hasn't had in a while. New York must have had. They get cold, kind of. Or even the draft. The draft would be cool. NHL draft's not as fun as the NFL draft. No, it's not. It's but a little, at least here's a chip. Here's a chip. How they host the draft? I'm like, give me a break. I'm, I'm not going to draft. You going to draft? I'd go. Uh, Check it out. Unless it's free. <laughs> or a media pass. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't be free. <laughs> okay. Anyways, Gary Bettman's in town. Uh, stars, Flames, Kraken. Let's look at the Jets' upcoming week. Uh, what are your th- what is the score in the Dallas game we have? We're live with the Dallas game right now. Do you got a score update on that one? Yeah, I just checked it out. It's over. Jets uh, win 5-1 over Dallas. So the Jets are looking really good. They are tied right now with Dallas for first place in the Central Division. 8-3-1 uh, and one in their last uh, few games. 6-0-1 oh, in their last seven now. 
They're looking good. Yeah. And ever since they came back from that road trip where they got the five out of six points, but didn't look great and getting those five out of six. Mm-hmm. Um, and now bonus is back behind the get bench. Montreal shutting out Chicago on the weekend. Yeah, um, beauty. You know, that, that obviously is making them play. And even with Dallas tonight, to me, it was, th- that's a big test because they always have seemed to struggle with Dallas over the last couple of seasons. Oh, um, true. Yeah, yeah. And even earlier this year, Dallas looked, made them look terrible. Um, Number one. Yeah, but the Jets came out hot. Like they came out in that first period, they're out shooting Dallas. I think eighteen eight. It was zero zero after one. But uh, you could tell they were playing that way. And then once Dallas scored, Jets is like they said, "Forget it, let's go." And they ended up scoring three goals in three minutes and never looked back. Stars were on a bit of a streak of their own. They yeah, two and zero on the road coming into this one, beating Edmonton six two, and also beating the Coyotes seven two. Uh, but yeah, the Jets are looking good. They're playing better team defense. They're filling up the ice, uh, spacing in the ice, and that top line, ooh, looking good. Yeah, two Far goals deep. for two goals for Shifley tonight. Yeah, you know, and and nice nice goals like set up like he just tapped them in like they're both tappings and Connor set up one. I think Appleton may have uh, set up the other one. Um, so a good night for that first line. Um, yeah. again. On the weekend, they were uh, three out of four on the power play against Chicago. So that, that got going. Um, only one power play today, 0 for 1 on that. But it's nice to see that power play click a little bit in that Chicago game, and hopefully that can carry over. So they got the Flames coming up. Calgary on a bit of a slide of their own. They've lost five straight after a pretty hot start. Uh, to quote Coach Sutter, and I quote, uh, <laughs> we've got guys, this is on his defense, by the way. Uh, we've got guys, uh, what do we play them like? 23, 27 minutes. That means those guys are doing everything they can. And this depth stuff that we talked about in the summer, it's a bunch of bullshit. That Sutter has wow. always been honest, and it's true. They're yeah. getting no defensive help right now from their, their bottom pairing, and uh, they might be right for the pickings against the Jets. Also, Chris Tanev is out. Yeah, I guess it depends what Markstrom shows up because he can obviously steal a game. Um, it's in Calgary, so maybe that'll help Calgary out a bit. A bit of a later game. game there for the Jets. So yeah. Huberto has but, not been the blockbuster that everyone was expecting him to be. Yeah, no, he hasn't. Is he? I thought I saw something about him being injured too. He was a late scratch in their last game. So maybe maybe that Tonight's was part game. of the injury or tonight, yeah. Against the Devils. Which they lost as well. So of course the Devils are hot. Yeah, the Devils. That's they finally are. They finally getting a goal in the Devils. We'll find out over the course of the season. But yeah, big moment for the Jets if they can do this. They're eight three and one. You know, the Kraken actually are having a pretty decent season compared to last year. Um, yeah. They're up there in the standings and looking good uh, throughout it. So that one might be a tough one. And they got Grubauer, who is their highest played player, the goalie, and Martin Jones is being dominant. You remember Martin Jones? Yep. You remember? Yeah, I thought Martin he was Jones. I thought he was done. Oh, well, he ain't done when he got his revival in Seattle. He's a Kraken now, and he's saving everything. It's funny how the lower end or cheaper goalies are doing better than the actual starters are. Yeah, there's a theme this year. There's yeah. a theme. Uh, you talked about the power play uh, doing good, sliding a bit. Only one opportunity tonight. Uh, but they also got to keep that penalty kill going this week through these games. They were 15 out of 16 on the PK in the aforementioned six games before tonight. Uh how they do they must have been perfect on the PK because that was a five on five goal for Dallas, wasn't it? Yeah, and only one penalty for them tonight, which is big. So yeah, <laughs> which they is killed even that better. off. Yeah. So and uh I know Kyle Connor didn't get on the scoring sheet for goal wise, but he got two assists. So as long as you keep that guy busy, I think that's the key to getting into those games this week. Well, that 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 Shifley goal was basically all Connor. Mm. You know, he he made the moves in Dallas and got free and then he found Shifley across the ice to just tap it in. So that was a beauty. Like Connor deserves a lot of credit on that. So it's good to see him, you know, not always the goals, but now he's chipping in some assists too. So playing with confidence. Yeah. So Ooh, it's picking up thing. If he has a puck in his stick, he draws people to him and that opens up the rest of the ice. Yeah. Hopefully Ehlers can get back soon. I, oh. I think he's going to be practicing by the end of this week or something. So yeah. that'll be good. And that make that line even better, you know, replacing Ehlers with Appleton. And that'll make that bottom six better. Yeah. Appleton back down. And Harkins has actually been a factor. He's not, I don't know if he got on the score sheet tonight. He didn't. Nobody had a great chance. Night, but he's yeah. always been there. He's always been in the action. I've always been a fan of Harkins. Yeah. 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 I'd like uh, to see him get more opportunity there. Hopefully he can keep it going and he gets to stay in the lineup. And one more point in those games. And this hasn't been a real issue in the past few games when they've been on the streak, but they got to avoid the sluggish starts. 
Yeah. It seems and like it, Rick Bonus got some focus and they're not doing that. No, no, yeah, exactly. The last two games, or even the Montreal game, too, uh, their first periods were actually pretty good. And tonight, if you're out shooting Dallas 18-8, um, yeah. that's, a, that's a great start. And it helps Halibut not face those 20 shots in a period and get settled into a game a little bit better. So, yeah, Slug it's good. doesn't mean scoring right away. No. It's not playing on the back of, on the back of your heels. It's not playing on your heels, uh, but being, you know, pushing the puck forward rather than being passive. Yeah, it's great. It's crazy because the, the the road trip where they got five out of six, Hellebuck stole some points, and really they probably didn't deserve points in LA and in Vegas at all, right? No, um, maybe not even the Coyotes. No, yeah, I mean that was a little bit closer, but yeah, they they got that one in overtime, and then bonus comes back, and now the next three games they're playing better, so maybe it is a big factor having bonus. He knows his system inside and out, so maybe that's a little bit better with him coaching behind the bench than Arneal at this point. Um, yep. so that's good to see and hopefully they'll keep it going and he also put it on the table by saying hey it's cool that we got five out of six points but that is not the standard that we're looking for yeah didn't sugarcoat it at all that's great good stuff on that yeah nhl hot topics let's start with uh the guy who was traded for huberdo is that right <laughs> yeah yes matthew kachuk uh he wanted out now he's in florida and he's still up to the same stupidity two game suspension for putting a stick in junk in quick's face what a joker clown Totally intentional. You see him turn the stick. You see him go for the eye or whatever. Like, I don't know if he was going for the exact for the eye, but he was going somewhere in the mask to poke something. And it's crazy. It's his fourth suspension, you know, and then on only two games. It's like he is, he has done it again and again, and he's got suspended four times. And you only give him two games for this. Yeah. Like, and he got away with even that Shifley one that time, you know, in the playoffs there, he didn't get suspended for that. And that looked very suspicious kind of play as well. It's crazy. Such a good player, puts up the points, plays hard. Yeah, be that a hole on the ice, but keep it clean. You know, you don't. There's just stuff you don't need to do. What's two games in a hundred thousand? <laughs> Nothing. Give me a break. Nothing. Uh, he just gets a little vacation. That's it. Exactly. Let's talk about the Bruins and this ridiculous signing, or the rigged, not ridiculous signing, ridiculous approach to the signing, and the the ignorance of what was going on picking up Mitchell Miller, a Coyote draft pick who they eventually relinquished because of what he did. Uh, your thoughts on this? I think it's terrible. Like it, it, the guy, he obviously he got dumped by Arizona after it came to light more and more that he was a uh, bullying a Isaiah Meyer Crothers, a uh, black former middle school classmate with developmental disabilities. The guy never apologized directly to him. He only wrote to him an apology because he, the courts told him to. So I already don't see any remorse there at all. Mm-hmm. Now, Boston is coming in and signing the guy um, for what? The NHL has already said, and I like that Batman came out and said, there's chances are Mitchell Miller, or Mitchell Miller wasn't even going to be playing in the NHL right now. Yeah. There's chances are he may never play in the NHL anyways. Yeah. So I don't know how this signing would have even got through or being allowed, but you think it's something Boston would have checked with the league and say, hey, we're interested in this guy. Is there any possibility of bringing him in? No. So not isolated. He, he bullied this kid over and over again. No remorse, no nothing. I don't know if he's done anything to make him a better person or not, but terrible choice by Boston. And then their reasoning for going back on it, saying, oh, they didn't know all the facts. Well, you should have checked that out. Started bullying the kid in grade one. Yeah. Uh, harassing him emotionally, physically, and psychologically. Picked him because he was weaker and had those developmental issues. Called him the N-word multiple times. Spit in his face. Told the kid to go pick cotton multiple times. I totally agree with Bettman saying that he's not eligible to pray to play, play uh, because a pop, proper process was not initiated. Uh, Miller, like you said, did not apologize. He went out of his way to apologize to the teams in the NHL, by the way. Yeah, he wrote them all a letter before the draft. Uh, exactly for the money. Uh, so of course the whole thing was approached very badly. Do I think he shouldn't be allowed to play in the NHL? No, I don't think we can move forward as a society. If we keep saying people who made mistakes, no matter how egregious they are, if we don't give them a chance and we don't give them the platform to get better. I think the coyotes actually should have stuck to their guns when they said, we're the plan is we're going to try and make this kid a leader against bullying and racism. They should have stuck with those guns and done that brought him up culturally in the AHL, put him in programs to better himself, 
learning, uh, reconciliation, not to say that in the Canadian sense of the word, but reconciling with his racism and what he did to the kid. I think canceling this kid is not a good thing for society when we have the opportunity to show that people can change and we can put these issues in the light because of it. Uh, so that kind of pisses me off that a lot of people are saying he should not play at all. I think we should use this opportunity uh, to make society a better place. Uh, so that's my point of view on that one. I, I do agree with that. And I think part of the issue with the, with Arizona back then was the fact that he hadn't shown any remorse that he kind of lied about how many times it had happened. Um, the fact that he said he had apologized, all that kind of stuff came to light and it, you know, did not make this situation any better. It made it worse. Um, so I think the Coyotes are probably in a position they, they kind of had to do it. I do agree the kid should get a chance at some point, but he has to start taking those steps. And the first step would be, you know, at least apologizing face-to-face, -face, talking with Isaiah um, and get the ball rolling from there and enter some programs. And then maybe eventually someday he'll get to play in the NHL. I think the Coyotes as a multi-million, possibly billion-dollar franchise are in the absolute best position to keep this kid. Uh, I did this they folded under the public pressure and especially with a especially with a franchise who's struggling anyways at the gates might as well have your moral obligations filled if you can't fill the seats like who cares you don't have fans coming out anyways <laughs> like so anyways uh, i think the kid's an asshole what he did was bullshit uh, yep. he served his time kind of uh he has a record but oh, there's an opportunity to, to pause and if he doesn't change then you can see that and then he doesn't play and I hope that's what happens. They still have an opportunity to do that. Yeah, give uh, him a couple more years and we'll see where it goes. Big ovation for Ryan Reynolds. Last point in the NHL here. Big ovation for Ryan Reynolds in Ottawa. Admitted on Jimmy Fallon that he's interested in the purchase, but he needs a sugar daddy. You want to be a sugar daddy? <sighs> Bro, we know what it's like <laughs> to have a sugar daddy here. Look at Chipman. He has David Thompson. He can do it on his own. Yeah. So we get oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. We get it. And I hope he'd be great for the Ottawa franchise. Yeah, he brings some hype. He brings some personalities. I can't even imagine the hype videos he would end up making there. It'd be all fantastic. Exactly. I think that would be <laughs> a great ownership group. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the 1990 Grey Cup winning Winnipeg Blue Bombers for getting inducted into the Manitoba Sports Hall of Fame. They were the last team to win before the, the Grey Cup, before we went on that almost 30-year drought. And, man, that was a hell of a team. Yeah. It was fantastic. <sighs> Tom Burgess, Danny Mac, Rod Hill, Perry Tuttle, Rick House, Ken Petway, Robert. I can go on and on. James yeah. West, Tyrone Jones, no, Greg Battle, oh. Stan Mikawas. <laughs> See, we'll, I can go on and on. But shout out to them. What a stack team. And of course, the coach, Mike Riley. Yep. And the GM, Cal Murphy, right? Oh, was he, he was obviously still there, yeah. Oh, for sure and, yeah. and his no one ever talks about cal murphy's coaching tree like just off dave ritchie and john gregory alone amazing yeah and of course mike riley so good so shout out to the 1990 and that great cup team was talking about this edition of the winnipeg blue bombers and they are impressed chris walby i didn't say chris walby yeah how'd you forget him i did and i just <laughs> remembered bro <laughs> benny anything to say to our friends Oh, you know what's coming in two weeks, less than two weeks? The World Cup's coming, man. So looking forward to seeing what Canada can do in that. Starting to get pumped about that. Um, so am I. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Hopefully they can win a game, score a goal. Um, thanks a lot for listening. Uh, don't forget, subscribe, follow. Have a good week. And in the famous words of Ed Whalen, in the meantime and in between time, that's it. Another edition of Gray and Benny Talk Sports. Do you think they'll score a goal? No. Do you think they'll tie Belgium? I think that's my big question. I think they can. Tie oh, Belgium? I, I don't think we're going to get a good result out of Belgium. I think that'll be tough. To, I think they can get the draw. I don't I, think they I, have a chance of winning. I hope they can, and I think they can maybe against Croatia get that draw, at least. Um, Belgium will be tough, but maybe they can catch Belgium off guard in that first game and see. But Belgium's got a lot of talent, and... Oh, it'll be tough. And Davies, he, he needs to be healthy. That hammy again. They play a system like the Jets. Defense creates offense. You know, they they have no problem pushing the game. They won't push to make mistakes, I don't think. So I think it might be surprising. They could get four points. Or sorry, three points. Yeah. They can't draw themselves. 
Hey, friends and neighbors, don't forget to check us out online on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Ray Benny Sports. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, tell us what you think.